Hi guys, my name is Vivek and I'm a second year medical student at St Andrews University. So today I'll be walking through an effective technique to answer some quantitative reasoning questions. QR is the middle section in your UCAT and for most people it's quite straightforward. It's more about speed and being able to use a calculator effectively and the number pad than anything else. So if you do have the chance, make sure you get used to using the number pad, which is usually at the side of the keyboard. And most people actually have laptops nowadays and don't actually have a number pad. So make sure you do get some practice on a keyboard with a number pad and all style keyboard by going to your library or somewhere else where you can access a keyboard with a number pad, which is definitely the quickest way to get through your maths and do your maths as quickly as possible. You do only really have around 30 or 40 seconds per question. So doing this section as quickly as possible can mean that you have much more time and much more of a chance to just get as access high a mark as possible. So for QR, I actually did access the highest band possible in this part of the test. And hopefully me going through a few questions in this section will help you pick up some techniques as well. And doing that in real time will make sure that you guys also understand my thought process. Okay guys, so I've got a QR question here for us and I'm gonna go through it as quickly as possible for us and talk my th way through what I'm doing. So this one's about velocity and this one's a slightly easier one than the questions you usually get in QR, though it's not that easy, I don't think anyway. Um, graph questions are really common in QR, so make sure you get used to them and are you're able to read and interpret them as quickly as possible. And tables are also, as most of you might have known, seen, are also very common. So this graph shows the velocity of two cars. Um, how much is an exchange for car in a car B? So you can see that it's a velocity time graph. And so car B has a velocity of eight and it actually stays constant. Car A actually accelerate, accelerating is because acceleration, as you can see in this part here, um, is the change in velocity. So um, car B is zero and car A's velocity we can do by we can figure out by doing 16 divided by four using the equation that we've given here, we've been given here and that's four. So it's four meters per second squared and four take away zero, um, which is the acceleration of car B is obviously four meters per second squared greater. So um, hopefully you guys can do that question slightly quicker because I spent um, some time explaining it, but let's do the next one now. Um, this graph is in a second year, just got 99 points. What's the difference between um, a few five score and so this is where it um, knowing your keyboard shortcuts comes in useful, especially in QR where you need it. So usually I click on Alt C straight away in every question and then read the question and move the calculator out of the way. So I've done that for this question, and we can see that what they're telling us to do is input the um, P5 score. Second year, she scored 99 points in P5. What was the difference in P5? Second year, and the average watch score in first year. So as you can see, there is quite a few calculations we need to do here, and I'm going to use a number pad to do them as quickly as I can. So first one I'm going to do is find the average score. So let's do that, 98. Add, let me start that again, 98. Add 92. Add 87. Add 89. And that all equals 376. Let's divide that by four. And that's 94. Average score is 94. So let's do 94 and 99. So take those away in your head. In my head, I get five. So as you can see, I was actually slightly slower in my calculation there. Most of the time, I don't have a number pad at the moment. But for those of you who are practicing with a number pad, make sure you practice going through things with that quickly. And you should be able to type things almost without looking. So that's a really valuable skill in saving time. So make sure you're, you are able to do that once you get enough practice with a number pad. And make sure you also know what these what the special buttons mean as well on the calculator. So there's things like the square root of which you might not use that often, to be honest, but there are the things like the memory recall button here on the left, which can be coming quite useful in one or two questions. And even though you might release it once, it can be the difference between getting a 750 and maybe getting into the 800. So being able to know how to use the more important buttons like the memory recall button and this um, being able to know when you've messed up and pressing, clicking on the 
um, reset button here on the bottom left is also useful. So let's move on to the next one. This table shows the percentage of them. Both the coins are made of olein, nickel, and copper. What's the difference in the weight of copper present in B and the weight of copper in A? Weight in A and B. So let's get the calculator up and do this calculation quickly. So we've got, um, let, let's figure out the weight of copper in present, present in B first. So zoom in again, 0 0.16 multiplied by 5, and I should get 0 0.8, so that's good. And now I know that it's about 4.2, um, which is the weight of copper in B. So I'll just keep that in my head. And if you guys need to, you just should write things down because it does only take a second and it saves you from having to sort something in your head if you aren't able to do something like that and keep multiple numbers in your head. But I'll see if I can keep this in my head and it's 4.2. Let's do 0 0.75 times 6.5 and that is 4.2. 875. Let me take that away from 4.2. And hopefully I should get an answer somewhere here, which is this one. So thanks for listening. And I hope you've managed to pick up some tips and tricks to help you in your UCAT QR section. What you guys need to do is make sure that you always bring up the calculator as soon as you can, once you open up a question using your keyboard shortcuts. And then once you've done that, try to skim through the stem of the question, which is usually the section at the top of each question and read the bottom bit of the question slightly less quickly because the bottom bit of the set, um, question is what they're asking you to figure out and it's usually the main crux of the question and these this is where the calculation that you need to do will be explicitly given out to you so try to make sure that you focus on that so get used to your keyboard shortcuts and reading the last part of the question and the number pad as well if you'd like any more help, we do have a detailed UCAT course and make sure to click the link in the description to be directed to our website and like, comment, share and subscribe for more. Good luck.